Okay, so this is going to be a video on some of the problems for your Chapter 7, Part 2 review. Um, I'm going to have you do problem number one. You need to, you know, define the purpose, your variables, come up with your two equations, solve it, and then don't forget to give the solution. When you get to problem number two, this is going to be a graphing calculator one, okay? And remember, after you get these into your calculator, you want to press zoom six first and see if you can see where the two meet. And if you can't see what zoom six, then you're going to do zoom zero, which is zoom fit. Okay? All right. So the first problem I'm going to start with is number four because of average rate of change. And average rate of change, again, you guys, is just another word for slope. And just a reminder of how you find slope, you subtract your y's and you subtract your x's. Sometimes you're asked to describe what the average rate of change means in context of the situation. And that just means, you know, look at what the y variable describes, look at what the x variable describes, and then you can come up with a description for it. So how do you uh, find the average rate of change on the first problem? Well, I'm going to give you the x value, 1. And we're going to do a little bit of math, and we're going to figure out what the y value is. So you don't need a graphing calculator for this problem. You just need a calculator. Okay? So what I'm going to do is this is saying if x is 1, remember f of x is the same as y, I'm just going to put 1 in here and figure out what my y is. So on your calculator, it's 5, and then the parentheses, and then hit the exponent key, that's the little caret key above the division sign. And then what some of you need to do is at this point with the uh, exponent put it in parentheses and then use your X button that's next to the green alpha button, X divided by 3, I'm um, sorry, not X, we actually want to put 1 in there, 1 divided by 3, put 1 in for X, hit enter and we are just going to round this to the nearest um, tenths place. So we're going to use 5.1 and then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to put 5 in for x. So 5, parentheses, and then hit the exponent key. And this time we're going to do 5 divided by 3. And again, I'm going to round to the nearest tenths. So I'm going to do 5.4. And what I need to do from there is um, subtract my y's. I'm going to do 5.4 minus 5.1. And that means I'm going to subtract my x's the same way, 5 minus 1. So using your calculator, you're going to see that that is 0.3. On the bottom, you're going to get 4. And then you need to take your calculator again and take 0.3 divided by 4 and get that as your final answer. We need it over 1. So this is the average rate of change. Okay? Um, the next one we'll try to put it in context of the situation. So again, if x is 0, we're going to have to figure out what y is. And if x is 2, we're going to have to figure out what y is. So if x is 0, um, I'm going to say that this is, let's see, that's 8. I'm, it's 32. And when x is 2, we're going to say um, it's 2. Okay? So I'm going for this point and this point. So again, I'm going to subtract my y's. I'm going to do 32 minus 2. And that means I have to subtract my x's the same way, 0 minus 2. So I'm going to get 30 over negative 2. When I divide those on my calculators, I get negative 15 over 1. Okay? And it's negative because technically when you go this way, you know, it's downhill. So that's why you're getting that negative slope. So let's say x were talking about hours and y was talking about the number of bacteria. So what this slope or this average chain, rate of change would mean in context of the situation is that the number of bacteria, I'm going to do a little abbreviating, uh, decreases by 15 every, and then I describe one, and X is hours, one hour. So that's putting it in context of the situation. So the next one, uh, we're going to use the table. If X is 3, then the y is 4, and if x is 7, the y is negative 4. 
So we got y from an equation. That probably took the most work. We got y from a graph, and we're getting y from a table. So I'm going to subtract the y's, 4 minus negative 4. And that means I'm going to subtract the x's the same way, going this way, 3 minus 7. Uh, I'm going to add the opposite, and I'm going to get 8. 3 take away 7 is negative 4. When I divide those, I get negative 2 over 1. And again, the reason why it's negative is because as the x's get bigger, the y's are going down, so we need a, to have a negative slope. Okay? All right, next question I'm going to do with you is number 6. So on number 6, what you'll need to do first is press the Stat button, select Edit, and put t the time in years in L1 and the amount left in grams in L2. So I've already done that, okay? And the, so you should pause it, get that in there. And what we're going to do now is run an exponential regression on the data. So we're going to go back to Stat. This time we're going to scroll over to Stat, and we're going to choose Option 0, which is the exponential regression. So um, remember, we do want to see this graph. So some of you will need to go down to store. Some of you don't go down to store. It just depends on your operating system. And we're going to press the VARS button. We're going to scroll over to Y VARS and hit enter three times. So one thing I forgot to mention, which I will do now, is I'm going to, as it tells me here, go to the Y equals button, and I'm going to turn the plot on. Okay? Okay. So the equation that we get, uh, again, I'll have to do that over again. Stat, calc, choose option zero, scroll down to the store line, press the vars, scroll over to y vars, and hit enter a couple times. Okay, so um, the data below shows the amount of decaying radioactive substance left over a period of 19 years. When the substance first began to decay, there were 750 grams of substance. So we did the exponential regression. We're going to round our equation to the nearest whole number, like the directions say. So we're going to make A. Actually, I, I, need, I do need to change that. We're going to go to the nearest hundreds. Okay, so A is going to be 733.65. And then B, which I'm going to put in parentheses, I'm going to round to 0.79. All right, so there's our equation. So again, I had to change up to the hundredths. And what's the y-intercept? So now we're just going to use the equation. So what's the y-intercept? This is the y-intercept. And so what does it mean? Well, what this means... So what this means is for the equation, when it made a graph that goes with this, this is the beginning amount. The y-intercept is B. B is by itself. B is where you begin. So this is um, the number, or so the beginning amount, sorry. The beginning amount of the radioactive substance I'm going to move my paper over. In grams. Okay. You might be able to hear my TV on in the background. I'm at home. All right. Now we're going to talk about what the growth factor is. So the growth factor, that's G, and it's 0.79. So this is how it's growing. But I, what I want you guys to say is to actually give me what R means. So remember, G comes from us taking 1 plus or minus R. So since G is 0 0.79, we're going to think it of 79 cents. I have to take money away from this dollar to get 79 cents. And you can use your calculator. You can just take a dollar, subtract uh, 79 cents, and you're going to see that you took away 21 cents. So that's what R is at 0 0.21, and that means it's um, decaying at a rate of 20%. And it's decaying because they use the word decaying. So it's decaying at a rate of 21%. Okay? So now what I need for you to do is turn the plot off. So go to your y equals, turn the plot off. If you haven't seen this graph yet, we're going to press zoom 9 for zoom stat. It is slowly getting there. Sorry, 
I'm going to turn the plot back on. Then I'm going to press zoom 9. So once we have the curve on there, uh, now what we're going to do is turn the plot off, like it's asking us to do on step D. So um, go back to y equals, turn the plot off, because, and then hit graph, because I just want you to see the curve. And the question we're going to be answering now is, find out how much of the substance would be left after 100 years, and does this answer make sense? So what I need to do is 100 years, that's L1, and so on most of them, and I guess I just realized I forgot to do this, um, I'm going to tell you what button you need to be using to find the answer. So if you go back up to this question, table versus trace. So this one should have had table here. So we're going to go to the table, and we need to get to when x is 100. So um, you can scroll down to it. Um, I'm going to do a quick shortcut. I'm going to go to second window to table set, and I'm going to tell my calculator to start at 100. So again, I just press second window to get to table setup, and I'm going to tell it to start at 100. That way I don't have to scroll all the way down. And now I'm going to go back to my table by hitting second graph. And do you see that amount, this 2.7e to the negative 8? We talked about this at one point, that this is basically like nothing. So how much is left? Um, there's almost no radioactive substance left. And I'm going to write that number down in just a second. Because I do want you to write it down, but we're going to talk about what it means. So what my calculator says is 2.7e to the and negative 8. And what that means is, in scientific notation, is 2.7 times 10 to the negative 8. And that negative 8 just means I need to take this decimal on 2.7 and move it 8 times to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So when you look at where the decimal ends up, 0 0.00000027, that's pretty much nothing. It's almost all gone. Okay? All right, we are going to talk about number eight, and then I'm going to have you guys get started on this. So when you get to problem seven, what I want you to do is to find your green flip book. Um, at this point, if you haven't done so yet, um, what we'll want to do is, and I've already told you to do this in the directions as you, if you go through it normally, but make sure your plot's off. Let's clear out these equations. So you work really hard in college, and upon graduating, you get two different job offers from two different companies. You like both jobs equally, but they come with different pays, so you decide to use math to figure out which job is the best. So company A offers you a starting salary of 32000 a year and assures you that you can earn a raise of 1800 each year. Um, and that's linear, because you're going to get another 1800 another 1800 another 1800 In Company B, you get a lower starting salary, but this time you get a 7% raise. So what's going to be better? So first, with linear, that's y equals mx plus b. That's what your green flip book says. And we need b, what you're starting with, which is the 32,000. And then what you're going to increase by, and you're gonna, your slope is going to be 1,800. So my first equation is going to be y equals uh, m x plus 3,200. All right? So the next one is exponential because of that percentage, and that's this equation. Okay? So what's b in this problem? Well, this time b is 30,000, a little less. But G is going to come from us taking 100%, adding 7% to it, getting 107%, and using the decimal version of that. So this is going to be our G when we're ready. So I kind of ran out of room. I'm going to put the equation right here. So here, this equation is going to be Y equals 30,000, in parentheses, I'm going to put 1.07 to the X power. Okay? So what I want you to do is... Graph both equations in your calculator, so go to y equals. We're going to put um, company A into y1, it tells us in the directions, and company B into y2. So 1800, use your x button next to the green alpha, plus 32,000. Make sure you get all the zeros, 
and the next one with parentheses 1.07 and um, you know pause the video to get that typed in and I'm gonna start graphing by zoom nine or I'm sorry zoom six a standard window and my little wheel is spinning over here so it's trying to graph it but what's gonna happen it's not gonna graph in this window so after zoom six we're gonna try zoom zero still trying to graph on the color calculator. If yours is in black and white, just go ahead and press zoom zero. So zoom zero. So here, well, eventually here comes my line for company A. It's linear. And then here comes company B. It's exponential. And we're going to draw what this looks like. All right, so I drew a box. I need for you to draw a box. I forgot to put the box on there. So um, I'm going to leave. Here's the y-axis. I will draw it in there. And you've got your line. This is company A. And then you have company B, which kind of does this. All right? So there's a sketch, and we're going to record our window. So you press the window button, and we're just going to round these. So X goes from negative 10 to 10. And then Y, just to the nearest whole number, is 14,000 to 59,000. That's what I'm going to use. Okay? Okay, so we drew the window and we recorded the windows. And now we're going to find the intersection point. So going back to the graph, I just pressed graph. Um, there's two of them, and I'm going to go for the one on the right. So I'm going to press second trace. I'm going to choose five for intersect, and because there's two of them, use your arrows and just get closer to that point of intersection. And then hit enter three times, and I get an intersection of three point, let's do 3.85, and then the y value. So it is 3.85, and then y is 38936.89. Okay, that's the point of intersection. So what's it mean? It means that after 3.85 years, and I know it's years um, because X is describing, you know, each year. Each year it goes up by 1,800, and each year I get a 7% raise up here. So after 3.85 years, almost four years, um, you will have a salary whoops, salary, can't spell it, of $3,836.89 at either company. This is the one time where we're going to get the same pay. Okay? Um, what happens after that? Well, the exponential, company B, is going to pay you a lot more sooner and company A is still going to pay you more, you're going to get that raise, but you're not going to get as much as fast. Okay? All right. So when will your salary at company A reach approximately 60000 So what I need for you to do is you're going to go to the calculator to solve this problem, it says, and you're going to have to adjust the window. We're going to have to adjust the window so that we can get up to 60000 So I'm just going to go to the Y max, and I'm going to put in 65000 Go back to your graph. It's going to take a moment to graph. Just waiting. And remember, company A is the line and company B is the curve. So here is one of those things where I said you're going to press the, the trace button. So we adjusted our window. Uh, once it's graphed, I want you to press the straight button or the trace button, and I need to make sure I'm on the, blue, the straight line. So if you're not on the straight line, use the up and down arrows to go from one line to the other. I'm on the straight line, and I'm going to use my left-right arrows now until I can get that Y to be 60,000, or close to 60,000, because we're going to approximate. So it's still going, if you can see those Y values. Going, going, going until we get about 60,000. Okay. So there, that's pretty close to 60,000 if you can see it. That's a little under. If you look at the X, it's a little over 15, and it's still a little over 15. So either way, we're at about 15 years. So it'll take about 15 years 
to earn 60000 in Company A. Now we're going to see what happens with Company B. So now I need to get on the red line. So I'm going to use the up arrow to get on the red line. And when I jump to the red line, I know you can see that glare really well, um, my Y is about at 86000 So I need to use the left arrow. I'm going to come back down until I get about 60000 Getting closer. So there I'm a little under 60000 There I'm a little over. But regardless, I'm still at about 10 years. Okay? All right, and that's it. I'm going to ask that you guys try the rest. So again, just kind of pay attention to some of the questions um, as you're going through. You know, when number five, turn the plot on. Uh, then we get here, turn the plot off. I mentioned table. Look at the table for your answer. Use the trace button for your answer. So I try to tell you as best as I can when to turn the plot on and off and when you should use table or trace. And that's it.